Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer channel. Today's video is about Microsoft Nano Server using Hyper-V. The things I want to touch on today are creation of a base image, creating a new VM and attaching that image to that VM, doing the first login using PowerShell Direct from a Hyper-V host, changing the DNS settings on that created Nano Server image, and then we're going to go ahead and create a DNS record to be able to remotely log in from another machine as well as connecting to that server using WinRM from that other machine using the newly created image. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to log into my uh, dev machine. And in this dev machine, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with initially creating the image itself. And the way you do that is by uh, first actually getting access to the uh, ISO itself um, that contains the Windows operating system. So in this case, I've downloaded from MSDN the Windows 2016 ISO that contains both the data center edition as well as the standard edition of Windows 2016. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount that image by simply double clicking on it on my machine. And in that uh, image, uh, there's a folder called Nano Server. So you go ahead and navigate to that folder. And within that folder, there's a folder called Nano Server Image Generator. So I'm going to go ahead and take this folder and I'm going to uh, open that up and copy the content and put it into another folder on the same machine. Um, I'll just call it Nano. So in here, uh, a couple of things that are important. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually create a nano server image that's going to be attached to a domain. And in order to do that, I need to be able to actually run that command as an account that has permissions to the domain that I'm going to be attaching that nano server to. So when I run the actual uh, command itself or the PowerShell window, uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, run it as a different user and in this case this user is actually going to have access uh, enough access to be able to uh, create the uh, AD records so and this is going to be an administrator account that I have I'll go ahead and run that And now that I've started that uh, PowerShell uh, session, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in or go to my D drive. And inside of that folder, um, I have the specific uh, modules that are required in order to be able to start creation of that image. So what we need to f start doing first is actually importing that module so we can actually run the PowerShell command to create that uh, nano server image. So you do that by uh, running import module command and then we'll specify the actual name of that module which uh, ends with an extension of .psm1. Once we imported it uh, there's a command called new nano uh, server image and this command can be used to actually go ahead and create that image so uh, I'm gonna use the uh, tick here to be able to uh, Easy, well, show you easier all the different switches I'm going to be using. So uh, the deployment type that we're going to be doing is a guest type deployment. The addition of the nano server image we're going to be using is going to be standard. Um, the media path is a, a, f a location basically to the um, content of where the image is going to be coming from. And in this case, the ISO was mounted on F drive. So we simply point to the F drive and it will know uh, where to actually pull the files from. So in this case, I'll just specify F drive. And then I'm going to specify the target path. The target path is a, a path to where the actual uh, VHDX file is going to be created for me to use to um, actually create uh, the VM from. So in this case, I'm going to, since I'm already in D drive nano folder, I'm just going to specify dot slash, and then I'm going to call my VM dev nano. So I'll, I'll call the actual image with uh, dev nano dot VHDX. The next uh, parameter that I want to be able to uh, specify here is uh, setup UI. Setup UI is something that is basically used to specify the different types of 
uh, packages that are available for the image and uh, you can find some of these items if you uh, go to Google and uh, let's take a look at that real quick um, new nano server image setup UI And, and here uh, you should be able to actually see uh, there's actually a link here um, where you can go in and take a look to see what are the different options that are available. So I uh, mean, it will, uh, this uh, link actually tells you all the different options and what they actually mean and how they can be used. Um, another thing that is very handy to know, there's actually a tool called um, a nano server image builder. So if you actually uh, download this tool, this is where you would know what different types of options that are going to be available and you can actually use the user interface to be able to select all your options and actually go ahead and create the image. This does however require um, a lot of downloading of other content from Microsoft um, and it's uh, specifically it's the um, ADK pack that allows you to um, create images not just for nano server but also for Windows. So ADK stands for Advanced Deployment Kit. Um, and for this purpose, since I, I don't want to have to download all of that content, I already know all the different commands that I need to use. But the handy thing to know is uh, by using this particular wizard, it will also show you the actual PowerShell command that it will use to generate that image. And um, I actually ended up using this same wizard to be able to find out for the images that I need, which in this case were web server um, and I needed containers. Uh, I want to be in DSC. Uh, I needed specific three specific uh, types of uh, packages. So in this case, they are nano server containers, uh, nano server IIS, as well as nano server DSC. So the next uh, option that I'm going to be choosing here is going to be the computer name. In this case, I'm going to be calling it uh, Dev Nano. The uh, next option after the computer name is going to be the domain name. In this case, it's home.local, which is my domain uh, of my server or of my uh, network. And uh, the other item after that is there is a command uh, for reuse domain node. This is actually used uh, if you already have that computer object created in Active Directory, and this will actually reuse that computer object or overwrite that computer object. But since I'm uh, creating it from scratch and I don't have anything there with this account right now or with this computer name, I'm going to go ahead and uh, not use that. So uh, the next item in this list that I'm going to be using is the enablement of remote management. And uh, the very last command is for the lock path uh, in case I need to be able to actually troubleshoot. So I'm going to use dot slash logs and it will actually create a folder inside of the D drive nano folder and uh, put all of the logs there. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter here. And it's going to ask me for the uh, local administrator password to be set uh, once the actual image and the actual server is created. So I'm going to go ahead and specify that password, hit enter. And now it's going to initiate the process of creation of that image. So, and you'll see that when you go over here to this uh, D drive nano folder, that the logs folder is already being created and it's creating the image in a background. And if uh, we go back out to this uh, top folder, the nano folder, uh, eventually you'll actually see the uh, dev nano.vhdx files being copied over here. Um, and then it's going to be actually manipulated to customize with all the different settings that we applied. So the process it goes through, as you can see right now, it's actually adding the optional features that I've selected in my uh, installation script. So it's going to be adding the nano server containers, nano server IES, as well as the uh, DSC. There's also a bunch of different uh, packages that are available. So if, if we go back to the actual F drive, 
and in inside the nano folder um, there is a packages folder and this is uh, a folder that you can actually take a look and reference for other packages that are available for you so and you can read them online as well what each one of them uh, does and how it's used so uh, if you're interested in that uh, you can you can google for that so as you can see the the process was fairly quick uh, the actual image got created and we can see that we now have our vhdx file created here and what i need to be able to do now is i actually need to be able to put this uh, vhdx file onto my hyper-v host or the location where i can access this vhdx file when i uh, create my uh, new vm so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and copy this and go to my uh, hyper uh, hyper 2 host and I'm gonna go ahead and log in using an account that I can log in uh, onto the host with and there's a folder in here where I actually store all of my uh, images here so I've been doing some testing here so I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite that real quick So uh, I've gone ahead and actually placed that uh, new newly created image and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Hyper-V manager and connect to that uh, Hyper-V host and I'm going to also connect using a different account. And uh, now what you can see is I have uh, my different machines in there and I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And I'll go ahead and call this uh, Dev Nano to represent the same name of the machine uh, or the VM as the machine name that I've already used in the script. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at one gigabyte for RAM and specify the switch that I'm going to be using for network configuration and in this case uh, since I already have a VHDX file I'm going to go ahead and specify I'm going to attach the disk later um, after it creates the VM so it, it went ahead and created my VM I'm going to go back to settings here real quick and under the SCSI controllers um, I am going to choose the hard drive option click add and I'm going to navigate to the folder where uh, it's uh, the VHX is stored so I'm going to go ahead and choose Dev Nano and uh, go ahead and hit apply here as well as I'm going to check this guest services option uh, which is what I typically do for other VMs but this might not actually be required for Nano server since you never really um, logging into that server directly so this might not be actually necessary so and everything else looks okay and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, actually let me go back to settings real quick uh, from the boot order perspective I'm gonna make my hard drive uh, be the first boot option available so now that I have that there I can go ahead and uh, start this up so now you can see that nano server is starting up and there we go we're now at the login screen so if I want to be able to actually log in I can use my administrator account that I've uh, specified during the creation of that VHDX press enter and uh, we're logged in so as you can see um, it has the operating system set um, it also has the time as you can see the time on the machine is actually different than the time on my domain and that's because um, I am not using the dot one address for my uh, domain that this machine is actually attached to so one of the things that I actually need to do is uh, I need to log in to this machine and be able to adjust some settings because um, if I actually try to open up a new PowerShell session and try to navigate to that machine you'll see that I won't be able to actually connect so let's quickly take a look at what the IP address of that machine is I'm gonna to go to networking settings and you can see that the IP address of this machine is 192.168.1.82 now um, if we try to ping that IP address it actually doesn't respond and the reason it doesn't respond is because the firewall is actually enabled on the machine also if I try to do NS lookup and uh, try to look it up by name I will not be able to find it even if I use the fully qualified name and that's because there's no DNS record uh, on that machine 
So how do we do this? Uh, basically, if you look at my configuration uh, on my local machine, I'm actually uh, pointing my DNS server on this server to uh, 192.168.1.3, and that's what I want to be able to set here as well. However, um, if I try to do an enter PS session to use wind remoting to get to that uh, newly created VM, uh, you'll see that I will not be able to actually do that. So if I go to 192.168.1. and it's .82, and I'll specify the credentials here, and the credentials I'm going to use is dev nano administrator. And if I specify the password, you can see that it actually doesn't like it. And the reason why it doesn't like it is because basically not only is the machine uh, enabled with a firewall, I also uh, don't have the DNS record associated with it or created in the domain. So there's a lot of issues with uh, being able to establish a wind remote session because it relies on a lot of that infrastructure being set up and a lot of the configuration being set up appropriately in order to uh, understand that what you're trying to do um, is actually the right thing from a security perspective. So uh, how do we get around this problem? So one of the things that uh, I'm going to be able to leverage here is using what's called PowerShell Direct. And what it is is I am able to actually establish a session directly to that VM from the actual v, uh, the Hyper-V host. But the first thing I need to do is actually log in to that Hyper-V host using um, PowerShell. And I'm going to go back to my other PowerShell window where I created the image. And since I was running that as an administrator, which is the same account that has access to the Hyper-V host, I can go in and type in enter PS session. And and the computer name is going to be Hyper2. And I'm not going to specify any credentials here, and it's going to be able to actually log in automatically because it knows the account that I'm logged in is the same already. So it just used the same credentials. So now that I am logged into my Hyper2 host, uh, what I can do is I'll use the same enter PS session command, but instead of specifying computer name, I'm going to say VM name. And in this case, since the VM name is Dev Nano, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in using the account as a local account on that Dev Nano machine. So uh, we'll do this Dev Nano slash administrator and specify the password. And uh, this should allow me to actually log in directly. Now, this is actually bypassing the entire networking stack, and it doesn't require me to actually have a DNS record created. So it just logged into that VM directly uh, using the Hyper-V host. So now what I should be able to do is actually get the settings, just the DNS settings. So in this case, I'm using DHCP. Um, so it got the IP address dynamically. All I care about is just changing the actual DNS settings on that server. So let's take a look at what it's currently set to. And you do that by running a PowerShell command called DNS. Um, let's take a look at what that command was actually. So DNS, uh, get DNS client, DNS client. Um, server address. So if you run this command, what it actually give you is all the different interfaces as well as IPv4 and IPv6 settings that are set up on that machine. And all I care about in this case is just changing this first entry here uh, since it's the only entry that actually has the DNS server setting information in here. And the easiest way uh, I found to do that is by using the um, get dash DNS client sending server address. Then you do a pipe, you do a select to basically say, I'm going to select one of the records that is being uh, piped into that select statement first and one. So basically, it's going to select the top entry in the list. And then I'm going to do another pipe. And in this case, I'm going to call set DNS client server address with dash and server addresses. And in here, I'm going to specify the DNS server IP address that I want to set. So it's 192.168.1.3. And I press Enter. And now if I actually go back and run get DNS client server address, you'll see that the settings are set here. So another important thing that I want to show you is 
that if you actually run DNS, oh, sorry, IP config dash all, you'll see that now my server is set uh, to that correct DNS server. So um, I'll also say get date and let's see what uh, date it actually gives me. So in this case, if you see, it's still giving me the 8.45, 20 p.m., which is uh, a few hours behind. So let me do GP update force. And it's actually not a recognized command. So in this case, um, the time zone is actually offset and it doesn't know uh, what the correct time zone is. And when you have a machine that um, is, it, on the domain is critical that the time zone is actually set correctly. So let's uh, actually take a look to see how we can do that. So how do we can fix that problem? And the way to fix that is there is a command called uh, tzutil. And if you run this command, uh, it will tell you what the different options are available. And if you do uh, tzutil slash g, it will tell you that it's currently pointing to Pacific Standard Time, which is the default out of the box Windows installation. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to specify slash s. And then if you wanted to actually get a list of all of the different time zones, you can do uh, slash l, and it will give you all the different time zones. But um, I already know what it is, and it's going to be Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to go ahead and run that. And now if I actually run the dash G again, you see that it actually got uh, set correctly the way I needed to. So if I run get date now, um, it's still not there. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer now. And you'll see in the background that the machine is actually going to go ahead and reboot. And now we should be able to take a look real quick to see what the time settings are on that machine. And you can see now it's 11.47 p.m., which matches the time that I have on my computer. So, however, it did kick me out of that session. So let's go back and actually uh, get back into that uh, PS session. And I want to do one more thing uh, to make sure that we're able to actually get on that machine. So if you remember, when I actually ran the command before, um, I was not able to uh, take a look and find that machine in DNS. So, uh, but because I actually um, set the, the DNS server, I appropriately then um, actually changed the time zone uh, it basically uh, decided at a given interval that it's going to go ahead and create a DNS record. Sometimes you can actually force this if you get back on the machine and do IP config register DNS. And this will actually force the, uh, the Windows operating system to register the assigned IP address on the interface uh, on the network card uh, to your domain controller. So uh, there's a couple of ways to actually get around that issue. But in this case, you could see that it's now actually resolving that entry. So since now uh, everything is hooked up, let's take a look to see if we can actually uh, connect to that machine uh, using PowerShell remoting without using PowerShell direct. So uh, I am in a different window and I do not have any PowerShell session and I'm not also, well, it's, it's a PowerShell session locally on a machine, but I'm not remoted into my Hyper-V host. So I'm going to go ahead and do enter PS session computer name I'm going to specify dev nano and the credentials I'm going to use now are going to be um, actually before I do this so let me uh, add the account that I'm logged into this machine with first and uh, the way you do that is net local group administrators And I'm going to add uh, the, the dev account that I've been using uh, in my prior videos. So I'll run this command. And now the current account that I'm actually running this other PowerShell window with um, should be able to actually establish a PS session. So if I do enter PS session and computer name dev nano, press enter. There you go. 
So now you can see that I'm able actually to log into that machine. And if I wanted to, I can get get uh, get service. I can get process. Um, so everything is actually working, and I'm doing everything on that Nano server. Also, another uh, thing to show you is that now that I'm actually uh, up and running with my uh, Nano server, what I should be able to do is I should be able to actually navigate to HTTP Dev Nano, and let's take a look. So as you can see, I actually now have IS running as well on that server, and I should be able to actually start putting files um, and uh, websites on that uh, Nano server to do whatever I wanted to do with it. So um, I can also navigate to Dev Nano uh, as a file system, and if you go to slash C, which is an administrative share, you can actually get access to the actual files and folders on that machine and do the things that you want to be able to do with that computer. So uh, this was a, a quick introduction to how do you actually create and set up a, a nano server. And in future videos, I'd like to actually show you and use this server for being able to host um, my ASP.NET Core applications and other applications that are supported by nano server. Um, the, the big benefits of running nano server are, are literally the fact that uh, they're almost like the um, the containers in Docker. Um, they're very lightweight. They do not use a lot of memory. In fact, if you take a look at the Hyper-V manager, you'll see that even though my startup memory is set to one gigabyte, realistically, the memory demand on that particular uh, server um, is 235 megabytes. So it's a very lightweight machine. If you need to be able to host a small application and you want to be able to quickly turn it off um, or be able to uh, create a new one real quick uh, for your development purposes or even for your production purposes, uh, you can spin up a lot of these servers and they really do not take a lot of uh, processing power and uh, resources on your Hyper-V host. So this is a very beneficial way of being able to run your applications uh, quickly and scale them out if you need to at any point in time. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave uh, comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, also please go ahead and subscribe to this channel as I'll be releasing new videos uh, to show you how to actually use Nano Server in the future. And I will talk to you later.